User flows are crucial diagrams that depict the end-to-end -end journey a user takes in a particular feature. User flows help you identify friction and gaps within these journeys and allow you to correct the same. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a user flow from scratch. Let's take an example of an e-commerce website and we will be designing the flow for the checkout experience. Before you start, you need a few prerequisites that will help you design a much better user flow. Once you have all of these prerequisites, you will be able to make more informed decisions, thus allowing you to create a more succinct and seamless flow. First, you'll need a list of all the solutions, sub features, and any other requirements that are needed for a particular feature. This will help you get an idea of the entire scope of the feature that will help you determine how complex the flow may be. Specifically, you want to identify the major pain points that are being addressed within this feature. These pain points can either be of the user or the business or both. Ultimately, you want to build empathy for the users you're designing for and for the business that you're serving. Next, you need to look at inspiration that will help you get your creative juices flowing. To do this, you can observe similar apps within the same domain that are solving for the same feature and while you do this analysis it will help you identify gaps and opportunities that you can take advantage of you could also look up google and search for best practices of a certain flow so in our e-commerce checkout example you can look up best practices for a checkout experience and see what has been tried and tested this will save you a lot of time and it will give you a benchmark that you can build off on now once you have all of these requirements you can start prepping your flow first you need to write down the final outcome of the user for a particular flow and then you need to determine the most optimal path a user can take to achieve that outcome. This is called a happy flow, which essentially means what path a user would take without facing any sort of issues or errors. It is the ideal scenario for a user. This can be simply written in a bullet list format either on paper or on a whiteboard. So in our checkout example, the happy flow would be user reviews and confirms their cart, user then enters their personal details, user then enters their payment information, they finally review all of these details and click on checkout, and then they're redirected to their order confirmation page. This is an ideal scenario for a user who is checking out from an e-commerce website without facing any sort of errors. Next, you want to look at these steps in your happy flow and detail them out further. Each step would have more steps under them that you need to write down that will give you a clear picture of what a user would go through on each step. You can refer to your solutions and the other sub features to try and identify what kind of sub steps will be there for each step. For instance, in our example, the step in which the user enters their payment information can have several sub steps under it. One could be that the user will add a new credit card or debit card or they would want to link a digital wallet or a UPI like Google Pay or Paytm. So essentially, these are the different sub steps under the main step of entering payment information. You can continue to do this for all of the steps and then map out all the sub steps on a whiteboard or in a digital mind mapping tool. While doing this, it's important to keep in mind the edge cases such as error states that a user might face during their flow. For instance, a user might enter an incorrect credit card information. So in this scenario, it will lead them to a different path in, a, in the same flow. The bottom line is you need to account for all these different scenarios because they will be branches in your main flow. Finally, once you have all of your steps laid out and all the sub steps under each, you can finally map out your user flow. This is usually done using the conventional shapes that are universally accepted. Essentially, this means that other stakeholders like clients, product managers, developers, and so on will understand what a user flow means if they see these shapes and this diagram. So let's create the user flow for our checkout example. Okay, so I have sketch open here and I'm gonna show you how I've created the user flow for our e-commerce checkout example. Uh, I've actually mapped out the flow already, but I've hidden it with this white color rectangle and I will slowly reveal to you the flow uh, step by step. So the first step in our flow was the cart page, right? The user will land on the cart page and that's where this checkout flow starts. Now, the first action the user would take is to user reviews and clicks on checkout. So they will review their cart and they'll click on checkout. And if you want to know the meaning behind these shapes, you can uh, check out the uh, link in the description. I have a link to my ebook, which uh, in which I've written, I've explained all of these different shapes and uh, how I've used the user flow in a real world example. So if you want to read about that in more detail, you can check the link in the description. But moving forward, once the user reviews their cart and clicks on checkout, they'll be redirected to their first page in their checkout uh, in the checkout flow, which is the personal details. So on this page, a user will enter their personal details. Now I'm going to move this a little further. So once a user enters their personal details, they will essentially click on confirm. And then if the this is where a scenario comes in, a, you know, a decision point, a yes or no scenario, is all the personal details correct? If they are not, then they will be 
you know they won't be redirected but they will stay on the same page and we can highlight the errors and how to fix them and once the details are correct then we will lead them to the next step which is the payment details page now the payment details page as i said has multiple sub steps under it so this is how the flow breaks out so as i move this further you'll see that uh, there are multiple sub steps under this step so a user can select an existing payment option if they're a returning user or they want to link a new card or they want to link a new upi account and if they do any one of these three it will lead them to a slightly different path right so if they want to link a new card or upi account we would redirect to a third party overlay which is usually razor pay or you know uh, just pay or paypal or any of these third party service providers so essentially uh, if i now sh zoom out and show you the entire flow it follows the same convention where users take into a page and they're asked to do certain actions and then there are certain outcomes either if the actions were successful they'll be taken down on a certain path if it's not successful they'll be taken down on a certain path and and so on essentially the point of this demonstration was to show you how a user is laid out how these shapes are used and essentially once i zoom out here you can see now i have a bird's eye view of the entire user experience for the checkout flow so that is how you create a user flow from scratch it essentially gives you a high level view of an entire experience and workings of a feature if you want a more detailed explanation about a user flow and how i've used it for a real world application along with other artifacts such as sitemaps screens components and so on you can check out my ebook in which i've explained how to conduct research how to analyze your findings and ultimately create these artifacts which will help you make better design decisions i hope this video gave you value and if you want more tutorials on ux ui design then do consider subscribing thanks for watching